Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at ChainTUTS.com. Today we're going to be doing a more technical overview of the proof of work algorithms used to secure cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and many others. If you're looking for a more high level overview of this concept, we have another video tutorial available as well as an article on the website. So before we can discuss the technical in-depth parts of proof-of-work algorithms, we need to again discuss a computer science concept called a hash function. A hash function is a one-way function, so it's non-reversible. Whenever you give an input to a hash function and it gives you an output, there's no algorithm that you can put that output into to get back the input that you started with. As well, Hash functions have unique outputs for every input if they're well written. So hello with an uppercase H would have a very different hash output than hello with a lowercase h. Now it's important to notice that hashes actually can represent binary numbers. So for example, a SHA-256 hash represents a 256-bit number, which is all the numbers from zero to 2 to the 256th power. It's really hard to imagine how big this space of numbers actually is. So for example, if we think on a smaller scale, if we had an 8-bit hash, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, is equal to the number 8 represented in decimal. So now we can talk a little bit more about how proof of work actually works. What proof-of-work algorithms look for is a sort of magic number called a nonce. If you recall our brief overview of proof-of-work algorithms, remember me saying that the proof-of-work algorithms are guessing to try and find this nonce. So they're trying to just do a bunch of guesses, a bunch of computations to see if they can find a hash output that meets certain characteristics. And the nonce is the number that you add on to whatever sort of message you're hashing. In, uh, for, in Bitcoin, for example, this is the block header to try and find this output that meets these characteristics. So say, for example, we're looking for uh, some hash output that is less than or equal to 8 represented in binary. And we're hashing the message high. So what our proof of work algorithm would do is it would start at the number zero, add that on to high in a binary format, and run it through our 8-bit hashing algorithm. The output, let's say, is some number that's larger than eight. That's not what we want, so we continue guessing and guessing and guessing until we find a number that meets that characteristic. So for example, we add one onto our message of high, and again, we see that our 8-bit hash output is greater than the 8 target that we're looking for. We keep guessing, and we add 25 onto high after we've done you know, the 24 guesses beforehand. And ah, finally we see we get a hash output that is less than 8 represented in binary. So what's this some number that's less than 8? Well, this is called our difficulty target. The goal with a difficulty target is to find a nonce so that the hash output represented as a binary number is less than or equal to this difficulty target. So for example, if we have an 8-bit hash and our target is 8, we're looking for a hash output where the message plus the nonce guess that our proof-of-work algorithm is looking for equals some number represented in binary that is less than 8, that difficulty target. We often express this when talking about proof of work is how many preceding zeros do we see on our number that uh, is the hash output from, the, from doing the proof of work with the nonce. So what's interesting about this is the more preceding zeros that you're looking for, in other words, the lower the difficulty target number, the harder it is to find the guess that gives you a hash output that's less than that difficulty target. So if you have some difficulty target where you would only see one or two zeros preceding uh, the hash output, it's pretty easy to compute a guess or a nonce that gives you that output. 
However, the smaller and smaller the difficulty target gets, the harder it is and the more computation has to be done to find a nonce value that gives you a hash resulting in a number that's less than that difficulty target. Again, in Bitcoin, the uh, data that we're hashing is the block header plus the nonce. So the block header metadata for the transaction serves as the message and the nonce is included in that block header so that the hash of the overall block header and the nonce gives us some hash value that is less than the difficulty target for that block. The difficulty targets in Bitcoin tend to get pretty small in the scope of 256 bit numbers. So it is very, very difficult to find the nonce values and that's why hundreds of thousands of computers across the world running GPU based mining software still take on average about 10 minutes to find a block. And that's intentional. Over time as the mining uh, power has improved, the hashing power of the network has improved, the Bitcoin software automatically adjusts the difficulty so that blocks are found and therefore the Bitcoin currency is issued at a steady rate. The Bitcoin uh, network wouldn't work as well if, say, for example, it used to take 25 minutes to find a block and approve all of the transactions in that block, and now it took, say, only 30 seconds. So in order to stabilize the uh, amount of currency that's issued through the mining process and ensure that transactions are approved on a relatively regular basis, the Bitcoin software adjusts this difficulty target over time. So again, this has been a more technical look at how proof-of-work algorithms are applied in cryptocurrencies and other applications like anti-spam that we covered in our overview video. There's again an article on our website that covers this technical look at proof of work. And as well, the article actually uses real 256-bit SHA hashes to show you an example of how proof of work is applied. Furthermore, if you look at our GitHub for Chain Toots and uh, Josh McIntyre on GitHub, there's a proof of work library I developed in JavaScript that does proof of work for you, as well as a validation server written in C and PHP. So you can kind of get a real world look about at how you might use uh, proof of work for different applications. As always, I hope you found this video very informative and interesting, and I would encourage you to check out our other tutorials as well. As always, thank you for watching.